going to get started. It's 3.30 and we need to have plenty of uh, time to talk about something. It looks like you're not resuscitating, but I'm sure that's not what he means. And I know it's not what he means. And he'll, for those of you who may not be as familiar with Gershon's work, he'll clarify that. Um, thank you so much, Gershon, for coming here. I know it's a um, bittersweet way to come to the Catholic Center with Jim not being here. And we appreciate your friendship with him and your work with him and obviously your own work. And thanks for coming to, to be a part of this the series. Um, we've got our tech guys here. They're going to stream you so that anybody out there, wherever there is, wants to participate, they can do so. But, um, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to be here. Actually, more than that, it's quite an emotional moment for me to be uh, speaking uh, at the center named after um, Jim Capert, who was more than a friend, actually. He was my mentor for many years. And I knew him to be a mentor to the very last day of his life. Um, so it's an honor to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to do so. So uh, the title is uh, Dean Our Perspective on Mathematics Curriculum and Instruction. And the first question that you um, want to ask yourself, I'm sure you'll ask, what is DNR? So DNR is not, not necessitate, DNR is not Department of Natural Resources, and definitely DNR is not, not reason, as you will see. So, DNR based instruction in mathematics, the full term, is a conceptual framework that I have been working on for a long time that evolved and emerged from reflection on my work for, for many years in mathematics education and different uh, areas. So I worked on proportional reasoning, multiplicative reasoning in general, uh, proportionality, multiplicativity. Uh, Fractions and so on. I worked on the learning and teaching of linear algebra. I worked on the uh, learning and teaching of the concept of function, some aspect of calculus. I worked on uh, definitely the concept of proof in the last 15 years or so. Uh, so, in some point of time, you reflect and you ask yourself, what is it really that you um, co that constitutes your approach to learning and teaching in general and to your research in particular? So, DNR, in a nutshell. Uh, intends to contribute to a debate on two fundamental questions that they are on the mind of each one of you, of each mathematics educator. These two questions are very, very simple to formulate. They are colossal questions, very difficult to answer. And the questions are, what, is, what mathematics should we teach in school? And how should we teach it? Very simple, straightforward questions that we all interested in answering. But the answer to these questions, as I said, involve uh, numerous factors, political, social, cultural, uh, cognitive, and so on and so forth. So, so what is DNR? So let me give you an overview of what DNR is. What's important about this is to realize that DNR was not conceived in this structure. I'm going to show you. This structure is an outcome of um, of many pieces that uh, were chaotic and uh, incoherent for a long time. And only now that I began to see how they fit together uh, from uh, a different uh, pieces, from different perspective of analysis. So a DNR, you can think of DNR, and again, here my, my goal is not to talk about DNR in its, in its entirety in any way or form, but just to give you an overview. You can think of it as a system of two categories of construct. One, what I call premises, second concepts, and the third claims. So the premises are explicit assumptions, most of which are taken from or based on other theories. One of the things that I, I work quite hard on is to ask myself, what are the assumptions that I'm making when I conduct research or when I teach? What are the basic fundamental assumptions from which other things follow? So uh, I will show you what this set of assumptions are uh, in, in a few minutes, and I'll discuss some of them. Well, concepts are definitions of, 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 of ideas that are oriented within these stated premises. And finally, claims are statement, assertions, formulated in terms of the DNR concepts and entailed from the premises and supported by empirical observations. 
So you see this is kind of postulational uh, approach that you have premises, you have concept, you have claims. I, this is only metaphorically uh, or just reminiscent to maybe you can think of this as a mathematical structure uh, or mathematical system by, by no means uh, it is parallel to it uh, in, uh, in, in any, in any uh, comparison way. However, within the within this set of claims, there are two, there are set of claims that are distinctive, and I would, I'll call them instructional principles. So instructional principles are claims about effect of teaching practices on student learning. Each one of you, each one of us, has actually instructional principles. When we go and teach, maybe may not be uh, explicit to us, but we operate on the basis of some principles. I'll give you an example. So this is a very common principle, that when you teach, start with what is easy. Why it's a structural principle? Because you believe that this teaching practice will affect student learning positively. So I'm bringing this example of the structural principle because DNR rejects it. Of course, you know, what is easy? What does it mean? What, what, the, what mean easiness? Okay, I'm not suggesting that you start teaching integers to uh, um, fifth graders by starting with rings. That's not the meaning. But, there, and this has to do with the idea of intellectual need that I'll be talking about. Now, within this set of these instructional principles, there is three instructional principles that I found to be very foundational and subsume a lot of the things that, I, uh, uh, that I, I, I want to talk about. And these principles are the duality principle, the necessity principle, and the repeated reason principle. What I'd like to do today is really um, focus mostly on the necessity principle. Where this is where the term came from. It came from these three foundational principles, duality, necessity, and repeated reasoning, which I will describe briefly, but I will talk much more about the necessity principle. And there is, of course, the risk always that people will think of, the, of DNR just as consisting of three principles. Not so. DNR is a conceptual framework that's quite rich. And, and, uh, and addresses issues of learning and teaching and curriculum uh, design. Okay, so by the way, I want to make this uh, somehow informal and if you have questions or you know, comments or anything you want to talk about, you know, we can do that, we have, we have enough time. All right, so let me share with you some of the uh, DNR principles here. Um, sorry, DNR premises. You see there's a long list here. Uh, but let me um, uh, pull out a few and talk about them. The first premise, by the way, the, these eight premises, seven of which came from other theories, the only one, oh, sorry, the only one that is mine is the first one, and that's the definition of mathematics. This is actually a quite long story, and I'll not be able to talk about this in length. However, um, if you like to read about it, if you go to my website, there is, there is an article called What is Mathematics? A philosophical uh, a pedagogical answer to a philosophical question. <coughs> Please. And the argument here, uh, or the assertion, is that mathematics actually consists of two categories of knowledge. And there is a technical term for, for the meaning of these two categories of knowledge, or the labels of these two categories of knowledge, when you understand the way of thinking, that I will not get to it, because it will take all my time. However, you can think of ways of thinking and ways of understanding, or ways of understanding and ways of thinking, corresponding to, roughly speaking, to subject matter and conceptual tools. So, ways of understanding, you can think of them as definitions, particular definitions, particular theorems, particular interpretation, particular proof, particular problems. This is a subject matter. This is what you see when you open any textbook, when you read in any, any article. That is what's present there. Okay. There's a theorem, there is a proof, and each of us has a certain interpretation of that theorem, has a certain interpretation of that proof, and, uh, and these are ways of understanding. Ways of thinking is something completely different, which we pay very scant attention to it, and that is the conceptual tools that, that, that govern the construction of subject matter. Uh, I'll give you an example, and again, I don't want to get too much into it now, because I will have to show you some ways of thinking. Uh, heuristics is an example of way of thinking. Roughly speaking, there are ways of thinking can be classified into three categories. One is problem solving approaches. The second is what I call proof schemes, what constitute truth in mathematics. And the 